Thank you. Now we're going to go collecting in the old Southern style. Now here's an interesting fellow. Robert Bourne is a tavern owner, chef, bartender, music lover, history buff, and above all, a passionate relic hunter. His Charleston establishment recreates the Civil War era down to authentic recipes. But while guests eat his gumbo with rice or shrimp paste sandwiches, Robert is waiting for them to notice what he has literally dug up. I tell you, there's no drug in the world that can compete with digging up a fine bottle or a nice belt buckle. None in the world. It's the greatest high you could imagine. You get uh, a feeling of, of the last person that touched this has been dead for 150 years. Now it's, it's brought back to life again. It lives again. I think that's the main thing, seeing history live again. In South Carolina, after a property owner gives the go-ahead, relic hunters have a heyday digging fields, backyards, wells, and even privies. I've just recently, with the help of a good friend of mine, gotten interested in the privy digging. It's a lot of fun, and they're a time capsule of uh, goodies. For bottle lovers, the display at the Moultrie Tavern is a definite draw. There are bottle diggers all up and down the East Coast, and I'm sure there are out West. But on the East Coast, of course, there was so much high living going on here that uh, they discarded a lot of bottles, and people just love them. They, people that come in here just go crazy over them. The first day that we found the site, and that's when the head archaeologists came out to make sure that the bones were human and not uh, cattle. There's a scrapbook at the bar about Robert's find a while back that made headlines. Digging in the wake of a bulldozer when property was being developed, he found 18 buried Union soldiers. They were an all-black regiment from Massachusetts. Robert saw to it that the site was studied and documented by university archaeologists. The bodies will be reinterred. They gave the last full measure they deserve to be treated with the honor, honor and dignity that they deserve and be put in a national cemetery, and I hope that happens soon. <laughs> I think that was foundation of the warehouse or something. Mm -hmm. Had to have been. Up, up, but what the hell was that? Just before leaving, we saw a demonstration of digging at a privy site behind the tavern. Old pieces of this and that came out of the ground, accompanied by the whine of modern air conditioners. Most archaeologists or most societies or most museums are not concerned mostly about the artifacts. They're concerned about documentation. And I document every site that I dig. I document everything that comes out the ground, whether it's a pipe bowl or a shoe buckle or a military button or, a, you know, whatever. Documentation is a key thing. He also tries to leave every site better than he finds it, or at least in the same condition. So the link. Finally, a piece intact. Higgins Inks, Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> yeah, it is. There you go. I can see how it's easy to catch relic hunting fever. The artifacts will live forever, and hopefully generations to come will be able to appreciate them and admire them, especially admire what, uh, what steps this country has gone through to become what it is now. <laughs>